No, it's worth me to see. Spencer Miller to come forward and give our opening prayer. And Spencer's with the Missouri Street Church of Christ. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you've given us. Uh, please help all those who need you right now, Lord. Keep your hand over them. Please help these councilmen and women to do your will today. Thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for us. And um, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Spencer. I think it's obvious to everyone that we've had a junior leadership group here with us today, and I believe we have 15 students from various schools around West Memphis, uh, including West Memphis Christian, West, and East. And we had one student from Wonder that had not made it this morning. I don't know whether that student ever made it or not. But it's good to have all of you with us. Uh, you're always welcome. And uh, we'll expose you to city government today. I call this meeting to order. Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? Here, Mayor Johnson. Here. City Attorney Peoples. Here. City Treasurer Martin. Absent. Councilor Holt. Here. <laughs> Watch Councilor Tyrone. Here. Councilor Carter. Present. Councilor Robinson. Present. Councilor Catt. Here. Councilor Pulliam. Is absent. Councilor Taylor. Here. Councilor Coleman. Here. <laughs> Councilor McClendon. Present. And Councilor Mundy. Present. We've got nine out of ten present, sir. Quorum present. We will proceed with our meeting. First item on the agenda would be the bid openings, uh, Public Works Department. This was on striping for, of our streets, and you have the tally sheet in front of you. Would you, if you reviewed it, would you give me a motion and a second to refer it to the public works for disposition? So moved. Second. second. All in favor by aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. And I believe there's a request from public works if you would stay just for a few minutes right after the meeting and award this if you see fit. You have a copy of the minutes in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections? Motion to approve the submitted. Have second. a second. Motion second to approve the minutes as submitted. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed? They are approved. We had no items of old business brought forward, so we'll move on into new business. We have two ordinances today. Ordinance 01. Do we wish to read it out or read it, read it in its entirety? I'll make a motion that we read 01 and 02. By title? By title only. Have a second? Second. A motion second read title only all in favor by aye. aye aye opposed and for our visitors an ordinance becomes law once it's read three times there are two ways that we can read it we can read it by title only which we just voted to do or we can read the ordinance in its entirety we have seen these ordinances that have run 15 to 20 pages in their entirety so we choose most of the time to read title only which gives you a breakdown of the general gist of the ordinance. So the next two ordinances will be read by title only. And I told you this morning, this body, this is a legislative body and they make the laws for the city of West Memphis. And once these are passed, they become law. Would you read the title to 01? The title of this ordinance reads as follows. An ordinance approving the hiring of Lisa Suggs DBA, Lisa's Perfect Paws for dog grooming for the city of West Memphis and for other purposes. That concludes the first reading. We will have it on, its, on our next meeting for its second reading. Moving on, would you read the title to 02? The title of this ordinance reads, An Ordinance Waiving Competitive Bidding for the Purchase of a 2,250 kilowatt genera generator set powered by a Caterpillar engine with a 7,500 gallon fuel tank with automatic transfer switch gear and for other purposes. Concludes the first reading. Could I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place it on its second reading? So, so moved. moved. Second. Uh, have a motion and a second. All in favor by aye. Aye. Opposed, would you read it for the second time? Again, the title reads, An Ordinance Waiving Competitive Bidding for the Purchase of a 2,250 kilowatt generator set powered by a Caterpillar engine with a 7,500 gallon fuel tank with automatic transfer switch gear and for other purposes. That concludes the second reading. Had I have a motion to further suspend the rules and place it on its third and final reading. So moved. So moved. And a second? Second. second. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed, would you read it for the third and the final time? Again, the title reads, An Ordinance Waiving Competitive Bidding for the Purchase of a 2,250 Kilowatt Generator Set Powered by a Caterpillar Engine 
with a 7,500 gallon fuel tank with automatic transfer switch gear and for other purposes. Concludes the third and the final reading. Could I have a motion and a second to approve? So, so moved. Second. Sure. Any additional discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. I would like just for the public's sake a little bit of explanation of what this generator will do. This generator and the power unit that uh, supplies it uh, with, with its power will be installed at the utility commission that in case of a severe power outage where the city loses power to all of our facilities, they will be able to run that entire campus with this generator and with this engine that will be purchased. This will keep the fueling system going. It provides the gasoline and the diesel for all of our vehicles. This will keep the water treatment plant going in case of power outages as well as it will keep the water transfer pumps at the utility going. It will also keep a well going that's at the utility. So it will provide services to our citizens in case of a catastrophic power outage that, it, that uh, affected the entire city. We've had that happen before, but it will keep the utility plant and the water going uh, on its own. It produces 2.25 megawatts, and that's more than ample to supply that, that facility. So the problem we had recently when we had our uh, power outage, we would not have a total power outage had this unit been in place. Had we had this unit, we could have kept the utility plant itself going and the fueling system where we could get gas and diesel for our cars, for our police cars, for our sanitation trucks, all of that would have been kept in operation. And this was a <coughs> $514,000 item that we're purchasing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions or discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried. Mr. Clerk, would you give that ordinance a number? That'll be ordinance number 2297. And for our visitors to become law, it must be read three times. You can read it out over three council meetings, or you can do as the council elected to do today. Since there was an emergency to get this done, uh, you can read it three times at one meeting. Uh, the, the council uh, has to be assured that it's an emergency and necessary before they'll read it three times. They do not take that lightly. So today this was something that was necessary. As you can see, the first ordinance we just read one time because it wasn't critical. And this one we read three times, so it becomes law in 30 days. That concludes items of new business. Moving on under permission request, uh, there are none. Under committee reports, <coughs> A&P. The Advertising and Promotion Commission met yesterday uh, on a report, activity report from the staff. The Civic Center uh, conducted uh, 10 events during the last month with uh, approximately 1,600 participants. The auditorium had four events with 8,800 participants, and that large amount uh, is due. This is dance competition season and school play season, so that's why that number is so high. Uh, we did approve funding for Delta Arts in the amount of $10,000 for the uh, presentations that they do. And then just as a note, Tourism Week begins May the 6th. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Airport? Yes, sir, Mayor Johnson. The Airport Commission met this morning. Here are some highlights of that meeting. Airport engineer Stacy Myers presented a revised five-year capital improvement plan for commission's review and approval. Phase two of taxiway rehabilitation is slated for construction next year, and the first phase of run rate rehab is scheduled for 2015. Airport manager Linda Avery attended the April Arkansas Department of Aeronautics meeting last week and received approval for the 5% match for Phase 1 Taxiway A Rehab. This $1.3 million project was recently completed. 95% of the project was funded by FAA and 5% of the State Department of Aeronautics. These funds came exclusively from aviation taxes. Commission Chairman uh, David Pike appointed a committee to review the airport's ground lease program. Commissioners Bearden and Lear will work with city attorney people and airport manager Linda Avery. That concludes my report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, utility? 
Utility Commission meeting April 12th, uh, commissioners awarded the 2012 high pressure flush truck bid to Scruggs Equipment for $352,286. Commissioners rejected bids received for the 2000 kilowatt generator and automatic transfer switch gear, but will ask city council to waive bids on the one alternate bid of $514,441, uh, which we did just a few minutes ago in this meeting. And that, that concludes my report, Mayor. Okay, police. Uh, police Commission meeting from March 22nd. Uh, Chief Oaks report on the curfew ordinance. Chief Oaks has reviewed curfew laws in other cities in Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee, and found that they're pretty consistent with the one we have in West Memphis. Uh, he reported that City Attorney Peoples is working on a draft to put more teeth in our current curfew law and will present it to the Police Commission for review. Uh, Chief Oaks would like to have the revised curfew law in place before the end of the 2012 school year. Under the Neighborhood Watch Program, Chief Oaks is working on tying the Neighborhood Watch Program in with the citywide cleanup and the Stop the Violence programs. Uh, he is looking at hiring personnel just to coordinate the Neighborhood Watch Program. He also reported that one officer has resigned, uh, three are attending the academy, and the police department is currently advertising for more officers for open positions. Uh, Chief Oaks also reported that the situation in the Foxwood area is under control. And that concludes the police commission okay. report. Somewhat insurance. <laughs> the reason I said the insurance meant somewhat, the fact that we met, we did not have a quorum. Uh, our Mr. Dwayne Douglas, a uh, new human resource person, uh, met with us with uh, Councilman uh, Taylor and myself. And of course, we did cover situation with the insurance we have right now. What we're working diligently on is trying to get it to renew at the end of the uh, fiscal year so we will have the calendar year deductible would not affect certain people because as it stands right now, we could conceivably have people paying two deductibles uh, like we did when we changed this last uh, insurance. So we're gonna work toward uh, fixing that or solving that problem. But that's Good. what's the gist <clears throat> of our meeting. Okay, thank you. Parks, James, Park, you're gonna... Yes, I've asked uh, Lorenzo to come up and give a report on, uh, I think the fire ant problem plus uh, Two, the two parks is under uh, construction. Okay. Greetings, Council. Uh, just a couple highlights. We met, um, <clears throat> excuse me, April 10th, and things that were discussed. We have had three ball, or excuse me, three youth uh, baseball tournaments out at Tilden Rogers, with more scheduled to come. Uh, Adult League softball had their meeting the week we had our um, park commission meeting. They're uh, beginning to get ready to play. YMCA soccer is under the way, and we also have a new soccer organization for youth that was created uh, by a uh, local residents, and the name of that is the Northeast Arkansas Soccer Association, and what we're doing is giving them the same type of help that we give the YMCA as far as facilitating uh, and helping them out, just not really running. They, they'll run their own league, but <clears throat> excuse me, we'll give them any and, uh, help that we can. And also, the Crittenden County Boys and Girls Club have started their season and one thing that we discussed uh, was uh, putting an additional t-ball field out of Tilden Rogers and the reason because uh, the boys club had they went from about six or seven teams to about 12 teams this year so it was a big influx which is a good thing and uh, also had a conversation <coughs> with representative Keith Ingram and he pledged uh, half of the money back that we spent in the form of a grant so the uh, commission did approve that uh, purchase, but uh, going over some of the things, the cost of climbed up a little bit. So we're still kind of trying to see if we can eliminate some of the uh, or, or nail down some of the cost by us doing some of the work. Uh, as far as partnerships, we had our Easter egg hunt uh, the weekend of uh, of Easter, which was pretty went pretty well. We had about four to five hundred participants at Worthington the Park. Also, we had uh, the Beta Club from West Junior High come out and do some work at Tilden Rogers painting our pavilions. Uh, which is a, a good thing. And also we had a, a, a partnership with Ms. Lorraine Robinson and A Street Mission that we did some work over at Roberta Jackson uh, Center with the flower bed. And we're also continuing to identify things that we want to do in that park and some other parks. Uh, and as far as a uh, uh, physical plant, uh, the street department has helped us out, which I thank Phillips Sorrell with some issues with our walking trail out at Tilden Rogers. We had some rough spots out there as far as most of it came from when we did the construction on the lake. You know, we had to reshore that shoreline, and some of that came, but the street department came out and did some repairs, which helped us out a whole bunch because we were getting some complaints about that. 
And the other issue, of course, I think you've read in the paper is about the fire ants. A uh, big problem with that. And I want to correct something in the paper. I think they um, stated that it cost about $7 per mound. That wasn't quite accurate. It's going to cost about maybe $3 <coughs> per mound to uh, fix the uh, problem. But now that $20 per mound was what we were paying for the liquid uh, uh, treatment. But Mr. Taz Tyrone helped us out and research uh, a, a more cost-effective alternative that we can do out there because at $20 a mile time, 200, you can do the math, that's gonna be about $5,000 to get rid of fire ants that we just didn't have. Uh, <coughs> uh -oh. Turn the page here. Uh, the other thing, we had to purchase uh, trash cans for uh, Tilden Rogers Park and you know, I went over with the mayor and me and him just astonished at how much a, a uh, trash container costs you know, for uh, uh, that nowadays. So with the amount we we're gonna need, that's gonna be about $700 to purchase trash cans. And you said, well, what happened to the trash cans? Uh, you know, anything from theft to damage to just, you know, basically with them being metal rusted out and the bottom rusted out. So it's just occasionally we have to re, you know, purchase those things. And the work is still continuing on the uh, grants at, uh, at uh, uh, Grimsley and at um, Horton Park. A uh, little bit slow going, but I know weather has been an issue, but we're prodding them along on that. So that's um, some things that, you know, we just gonna have to just be patient with the contractor, especially dealing with the weather. Uh, other than that, we just talked about, we have some lighting issues at <coughs> Tilden Rogers that we got to work on. And also some um, repairs that are constantly happening with the bathrooms on the softball end. I think everything is just old and outdated and just talking with Renita today, you know, we got an estimate to kind of replace everything and it's gonna run close to about $3,000. So we just got to take a look at it and see if we can, you know, piecemeal some of the work or just, you know, do what we can because we, we know funds are limited. And uh, just continuing to uh, work with the Lakes of Richland and the people over there, uh, just, you know, we have a contractor um, 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 that works on them, but, you know, we had to replace some pumps and also got to do some other things with the piping on it. but. Like I said, just one of them problems that we just constantly have to address, and we're just going to keep addressing them the best way we can. So any questions from anyone? What, what are the projected completion dates for Grimsley and Horton? The, 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 the projected completion date was by the end of the summer. And I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'd have to get with Philip to look at the actual contract date, but that was the date that we were told by the end of the summer. So I'm, I'm thinking early June. But with the weather being what it is, it may, you know, get extended. But I do know that we have them on a contract and, you know, how contracts work. If they go over the, the date, I think we can, you know, kind of charge them some, some fees that we incur. But like I said, we're just, because we've done our part, we had to do some demo and some site work and we've done ours. And like I said, we're just waiting on the contract to come back in. I think they're at the phase where they're ready to put the playground equipment in, but just trying to find, you know, some good weather and whatnot to do it because especially over at uh, Grimsley, you know, of course, you know, the complaints when it rains, it holds water for a while. So we have to let it dry out before they can get in and do any of the work that it, it needs to be done. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. Thank you, Lorenzo. Right. I believe that concluded the committee commission reports. I, I would want to comment on something that Lorenzo said regarding the neighborhood center and uh, to Ms. Robinson. It, I don't know how many of you have been by down there. It looks excellent already, and I know there's more work to come, but it looks great already, and I believe you have some flowers and some other things yet to come. Mm -hmm. It looks good. And she's working on another project with another city facility, and I'll leave it at that. That concludes the items of business. We will move on. In